in Blanca Rangel. I'm going to be helping you solve. I'm going to be helping you solve problem 6.29 of 9. So let's start. You had a 4,000 kilogram truck. 4,000 kilogram truck is parked on a 15 degree slope. It's asking us how big is the friction force of the truck if the coefficient of static friction between the tires and the road is 0 0.90. And they give us the answer here just to make sure. So the first step is to make a drawing. So I have a slope that is 15 degrees from the horizontal and I have my truck. There you go. That's my truck. So now that I have my drawing, um, I can visualize it better for my free body diagram. Free body diagram. So in this case, I will choose my axis to be my slope. My x axis is going to be my slope. And everything that's perpendicular to that x-axis is going to be my y-axis. So I choose this um, in, instead of using the horizontal as the x-axis, because remember, axes are arbitrary. So they can, you can choose whatever you want them to be, but as long as you stay consistent. For example, you cannot have your y-axis at an angle and your x-axis at an angle. They have to be 90 degrees from each other. So. I'm going to follow that rule. This is my x axis, and everything perpendicular is my y axis. Perpendicular means 90 degrees. So for my freeway diagram, I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use the particle model. So instead of drawing a whole truck, I am going to draw a dot that represents that's assuming that my whole mass is at a one point. So we're going to do that to simplify our calculations. So here, if you look, we always have, we, we are on planet Earth, so gravity is pointing right down. Force of gravity. So in a free body diagram, that will look like this. Mm -hmm. This angle, we compare this to the horizontal. This is the horizontal. This angle, it's going to be also 15 degrees. That's due to some geometrical properties. So we have, we're going to have a force normal. And remember, force normal in mathematics, the word normal, we use it to refer to something that is perpendicular. So a force normal means that it's the force that's always going to be perpendicular to the surface acting upon it. So it's going to be strictly in the y-axis. Force normal. Perpendicular from the surface. And just using um, just using some general knowledge, we know that if we have the truck, if the truck was on neutral, it will fall down the hill. See, that's the natural movement he wants to follow. Friction is going to oppose that movement. So it's going to be pointing up the slope. A static friction. Mm -hmm. So once we have a free body diagram, we can follow our calculations. So remember, you're drawing your free body diagram. If something in your problem is wrong, it's probably you did something wrong with the free point diagram. Once you have that, we're going to do the summation, Newton's second law. The summation of the forces in the x equals 2 to 0. Since remember, we have the truck is spark. And uh, where is it? The truck is spark. So it means that it is in equilibrium. So it's not moving. So the summation of forces in the X is zero. And the summation of all the forces in the Y axis equals to zero. So we have 
we're going to look at the forces in the x-axis. So we have that, there you go. We have this angle. So if, since we have it at an angle, we are going to have a force of gravity acting in the x-axis and a force force of gravity acting in the y-axis. So this is a right triangle. If you see, this is a 90 degree between the force of gravity and the y and the force of y. In we have a slope. Making a little bit bigger. Kind of looks like this. This is my hypotenuse. This is my, so if this is the angle, this is my adjacent, and this is my opposite side. So remember, we can use or or socket to our properties to find that. So I'm going to use sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine of 15 equals force of gravity in the X over force of gravity. So if we go back here, we're going to have the force of gravity sine of the angle equals my force of gravity in the X. And my force of gravity cosine of the angle is going to be my force of gravity in the Y. So I, I want to make everything that points upwards my positive and everything that points downwards down the hill is going to be negative. So I have my force of static friction, positive, minus the force of gravity in the X equals to zero. So the force of static friction equals the force of gravity in the X. Mm -hmm. Equals the force of gravity in the X. And then we do the same for Y. So in the Y axis, we have our normal force pointing up force normal minus the force of gravity pointing down. Force of gravity in the y axis equals to zero. So force normal equals the force of gravity in the y. So the question here is asking us to find the coefficient of static friction. So let's do that. We have force static. It's going to be equals to um, let's see, force of friction in the X. So that's force of gravity sine of 15. And that's equal to mass times gravity sine 15. So a force of gravity, a force of friction equals to 4,000 kilograms times 9.80 meters per second square sine of 15. Put that in our calculator. We have 15 sine, okay, times 9.80 mm -hmm, times 4,000. Okay, so I got a number of 10,156.05 newtons. So if we simplify this to the closest number, to the closest to the closest thousand, that will be ten thousand newtons, about ten thousand newtons. So that's our answer right here. Why didn't I use the coefficient of static friction? So remember, when we talk about static friction, friction will try static friction will try to match our force. So if, if the truck were to be heavier, the force of gravity will increase. But the friction will try to match it. And that will be true if, if the force that we apply increases, friction is going to increase. 
friction, the force applied. Friction is, it's going to increase. And this will be true until we reach the max static friction. And that's the maximum static friction is coefficient times the normal force. And if the force is larger than our static friction max, it would move. So we kind of look like this. So this is friction. This is the force. So if the force increases, friction is going to increase at the same rate. It's going to get to a point where it reaches static friction max, and it's going to go down, and the friction is going to be kinetic friction. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you so much, and see you next time.